Hi, I'm Aran Tromer, and I'm a, I'm a professor of computer science at uh, Tel Aviv University and the research scientist at Columbia University. I also work with several projects uh, on commercializing and deploying technologies that we developed, and I'd like to give you a broad overview of uh, how we've come to connect zero knowledge proofs to blockchain through several of these projects, and more broadly, the state of the art in zero knowledge proofs and ZK SNARKs and the greater potential that are ahead of them. So uh, to make sure we're all on the same page, let's start with the very first application of zero knowledge on the blockchain, uh, which is uh, addressing the privacy problem in vanilla Bitcoin. So as you know, Bitcoin represents ownership of coins as knowledge of numbers, specifically digital signatures or their corresponding signing keys. And therefore, to pass a coin to someone, you would simply send them a corresponding number and because numbers can be copied, that immediately creates the problem of dumb and spending. And one of the brilliant innovations in Satoshi Nakamoto was uh, the idea that we can prevent these double spending attacks by creating an append-only public ledger, the blockchain, that contains all of the transactions done so far, including those numbers, and so we can identify when a number is repeated and prevent double spending. Brilliant innovation, right? That's, that's what brought us here. But it has a cost, privacy. Because we are posting every transaction on the chain publicly, anyone can observe it. If you're a consumer, then anyone can observe every transaction you do, who you're paying, how much and when, which can get terribly embarrassing. Your future coworkers and spouses can dig into the chain and find all the dirt about you. If you um, are just uh, going into a shop and making a payment by Bitcoin, then you are implicitly revealing your Bitcoin balance and therefore maybe encouraging someone to relieve you of that balance. And if you're a merchant, then you're exposing your cash flow to competitors. That won't do. Zcash, our project that addresses this, um, solves the problem by making sure that all values that are posted on the chain reveal nothing about the content of transactions. So even though the origin, destination, and amount of each transactions are properly logged and can be reasoned about and their integrity assured, if you look at the chain, you see just a bunch of random looking numbers. And that looks weird, because if these are just random looking numbers, then how can we ever verify integrity? How can we prevent a double spending attack that we just talked about if these are just random numbers? And more fundamentally, it looks like there is an inherent tension, a paradox, between privacy and integrity. How can you verify the integrity of something that you do not see? The Zero Cash Protocol, the academic work underlying Zcash, um, had the following idea. Look at a transaction, there's a sender and a recipient, and the sender knows where they got the money, they know they haven't spent it, their virtual financial books attest to the integrity of a transaction. In theory, they could have, well, they could have sent those uh, books to the recipient. That's the Bitcoin way of doing it. We don't want that for privacy reasons. Alternatively, they could have theoretically brought in an accountant that would have poured over the books and verified the integrity and issued a signature that the books are legit. Now, that one may have been convincing if you trust accountants and you know who they are and, so, and, and trust their um, the accreditation and so forth, of course, it's completely impractical. But it does bring out a point. There is a procedure. There is a, a mechanical procedure that the accountant would have followed. And that means that, a, that there's a computer program that can check the transaction on the sender's side. And if we could find a way to put that co computer program into some cryptographic machinery that would run it and then prove that the program ran correctly and accepted the validity of the transaction, well, then the recipient would just verify the, that proof and we'd be good to go. So what do we need in the general case from such, from some, just, sorry, from such proofs? We need them to be convincing, uh, at least to computationally bounded adversaries. Uh, and uh, being convincing in that setting is called an argument by cryptographers. We need them to be non-interactive, so just proof that we can post on the chain as opposed to multiple rounds of interaction. We need, to, we need them to be proofs of knowledge. We need the sender to actually know their signing key. And we need them to be succinct. We need the, short, the proofs to be short and easily verified. 
And I'm spelling this out because it creates a convenient acronym, spell out, spells out SNARK. So we want SNARK proofs. SNARK proofs make the verifier very happy. They can now be convinced of the integrity of the transaction. Uh, but on the sender side, we still need to make sure that their financial books are protected. And that is the zero knowledge property. First um, defined decades ago by Goldwasser, Mikali, and Rakov. And um, now we are putting it to good use to protect the privacy of the prover. The zero knowledge property essentially means that the proof pro reveals nothing except for the uh, validity of the claim, but nothing about the reasons for the validity is exposed. So ZK SNARKs, that's the functionality we're going to use. And you may wonder, where do we find these? Well, here are some suggestions. This is a partial list of works on zero knowledge proofs and ZK SNARKs in particular um, that have been appearing over the decades. It started with beautiful, brilliant theoretical observations, the aforementioned uh, paper defining zero knowledge, papers defining probabilistically checkable proofs that uh, are uh, the way that we approach succinctness by summarizing big computation into some spot checks that are very short. And then uh, a long series of papers that took the theoretical ideas and found increasingly efficient constructions. At some point, more recently, about five years ago, they started the deluge of implementations. The constructions reached a stage where they were efficient enough, and practical enough, that everybody was just uh, eager to get this working and to build prototypes that show that these ideas uh, can actually run fast enough to be of practical interest. Um, this consists of uh, what we call back-end implementations, those that, those that implement the underlying cryptographic machinery, the actual math. That includes the Pinocchio and Geppetto implementations. They were the first of the new crop, followed by LibSnark, by my colleagues and myself, Snarkly, Bellman, and by now many others. Uh, but these tend to use very low-level representations. They represent the statement to be proven uh, in terms of uh, bilinear constraints over finite fields, which are related to uh, arithmetic circuits and are uh, precise ways to express your statement, but they are certainly not the convenient way that you would want to, do, uh, to choose if you were uh, building a, a high-level application and wanted to express your domain-specific needs and then just plug them into a backend. So there's another related series of papers that create such front-end compilers that allow users to express high-level needs and then compile them down to things that can be consumed by the backends. And then there's another line of work that uh, goes beyond the ZK snarks by giving up on succinctness. If uh, you are in a case where you can afford long verification or large proofs, then there are many other additional uh, uh, approaches and they have their corresponding backends and frontends. So it's, it's quite a zoo, and um, one way that we are trying to tame this zoo is by trying to disentangle the back ends from the front ends. So um, there is a recent proposal uh, with my colleagues at Kedit where we uh, built something called ZK Interface, a way to take uh, any back end, the implementing uh, a cryptographic ZK proof system, and any front end that compiles a high level specification into that low level bilinear constraint mathematical language and put them together by a compatibility layer that we call ZK interface. It um, currently supports a few of the popular systems. Uh, support is rapidly ramping up. Um, it's currently specialized to systems that use a particular representation called R1CS, which is the most popular but not comprehensive, and there are future plans to extend it beyond it also to algebraic representations used by other uh, SNARKs like Starks um, that uh, use a different native language. Um, so there's now all of this machinery, and this is one of the proposals to the ZK proof standardization effort that John mentioned earlier, and I'll speak about later. When we actually started building Zero Cash, we published these papers, my colleague and I, that was 2014, and um, it was first uh, just a, a published paper describing the protocol and proving its security, and then we decided, decided to take it to the next step, 
uh, and actually get people to implement it. So we put it out there and we uh, encouraged people to deploy this as a protocol, but it was promptly dismissed. Uh, a, uh, a put, one of the put downs was this is moon math, no one would ever want to use it, no one can understand it. So we decided to uh, do it ourselves by founding the Zcash company and uh, launching uh, the rebranded as Zcash protocol as its own cryptocurrency. And as you may be aware, it's now one of the leading cryptocurrencies with numerous users and very widespread uh, support in the ecosystem of wallets, exchanges, and integration to various third party services. Now, there are other approaches to uh, privacy in blockchain. These apply to uh, the basic uh, asset transfer for fungible assets implemented in Zcash, as well as to generalizations uh, to other asset types. Let's quickly go over these to contextualize. So one popular way to achieve privacy in blockchain is in the permission setting. We can just decree that the blockchain will not contain any publicly verifiable information. It will just contain hashes or ciphertexts of the uh, transaction's content. And someone, somewhere, is trusted to verify everything. It might be a single trusted party or a committee implementing some internal protocol, but we place the ultimate trust in terms of both privacy and integrity in that party. Maybe there are scenarios where this is acceptable. Each application would need to consider it. Uh, but it does have some very harsh trade-offs. Uh, for example, if you would like to later extend their participation to new parties who would like to ensure that the history is legitimate, then you would need to expose all of that history to those new parties. So you are currently putting your uh, private information out there with the implicit commitment to reveal it to unknown future parties or alternatively restricting your future expansion. Another approach uh, taken by uh, Bitcoin and Monero is to try to put the information on chain by somehow try to um, obfuscate it or mix it using ring signatures. Whenever you send a transaction, you also uh, add some decoy transactions uh, making where it's supposed to be difficult to figure out which of the inputs to the transaction is really the one consumed and which are merely decoys. That's an elegant idea, and it relies on well-understood simple cryptography. However, it's very limited in its uh, privacy uh, eff effectiveness. Um, it basically creates a very small anonymity set, for every trans anonymity set for every transaction, just a few past transactions. And once you do um, broader analysis of the transaction graph, once you do fancier attacks that insert known transactions into the chain passively or actively, um, like a recent e-print, uh, preprint that was published a few days ago shows, then um, um, you can easily link transaction and the anonymity crumbles away. Another intriguing technology is that of confidential transactions or more generally confidential assets that was also recently integrated in, into Monero. And it basically uses zero knowledge proofs, but very specialized ones, not the general ones that we saw earlier that can prove any statement uh, that can handle any virtual accountant, but specialized, simple, efficient proofs that can hide the transaction amounts. They can also they hide which assets is being transacted if you're in that setting. However, they don't reveal the identity of the participants. And there are many scenarios where merely knowing the identity of who's transacted with brings in many of the unsavory ramifications of privacy violations. Now, of course, you can combine both the ring signatures and the confidential transaction machinery like Monero does, uh, but still, um, there, there, are, there is abundant linkability and um, the privacy is, is far from what you can understand and count on because of um, the small anonymity sets. Anonymity sets. So with that context, uh, having seen one application, namely uh, vanilla fungible asset transfer, let's talk about some other applications of zero knowledge proofs in general and ZK snarks in particular. So if you're on a chain, the natural question is, how do we go beyond uh, simple asset transfers? Can we introduce smart contracts? And there are indeed many works uh, that try to achieve this. For example, Hawk, Zexi, 
ZKEVM that was recently revealed and Zither all implement various approaches using zero knowledge proofs to achieve some notions of privacy in the presence of smart pro contracts. Each of them has their trade-off, some compromise on linkability, some compromise on the power of the contract, some reveal the content of the transactions to some extent. It's a nuanced landscape. If you have specific applications, let's talk. But um, we are seeing these powerful tools being exercised in, in fascinating ways. Uh, moreover, Ethereum in its Metropolis upgrade introduced new precompiles that enable implementation of zero knowledge proofs uh, as part of smart contracts, which is a very flexible approach that is used by some of those recent projects. A completely different way to use uh, zero knowledge proofs, and in particular ZK SNARKs, is to use the S part of SNARK, the succinctness. Forget about privacy for a second. We had a very uh, intriguing property where a long computation, like that done by our virtual accountant verifying the Zcash transaction, can be summarized into a short proof and efficiently checked. Maybe we can use that for other contexts. For example, for compressing the whole state of the blockchain into a short proof that attests that the blockchain so far is correct. What does correct mean? Well, there are many ways you could play this. Maybe it means all the transactions fulfill the consensus rules. Maybe it means that the proof of work, uh, the proof of work operated correctly, the, the chain uh, weight is high enough. Maybe it means that um, um, uh, smart contracts uh, maintain some invariance. And uh, perhaps the uh, most exciting project in this area is Coda that are building a succinct blockchain using succinct zero-knowledge zero proofs. Um, and the end, at the end of the day, a Coda node would be able to verify transactions as well as the whole historical chain using tiny proofs rather than the gigabytes that are needed by vanilla blockchain nodes. Then when it comes to asset transfer in the private asset setting, in the private blockchain setting, um, then the Zcash and Zero-Cash approach can be adapted. This was uh, first shown by a prototype built by JP Morgan and the Zcash company, and is currently developed by Kedit. Um, John alluded to that, and we uh, will hear much more about it at the reveal event. Um, the idea is uh, to combine the, the use cases, the functionality, and adapt it to the specific dis different uh, settings of permission chains where, for example, issuance rules and other uh, permission uh, functionality needs to be supported, and yet privacy of the people transaction in the assets must be, uh, must be preserved. There are uh, uses beyond assets. For example, we have a prototype called PhotoProof uh, that showed how to use your knowledge proofs and um, there's a sickness in order to verify the integrity of media. In the case of PhotoProof, showing that pictures maintain, uh, that pictures are authentic, that they started off as something taken as a legit picture by a photojournalist or by someone on a dating website, and whatever editing um, they went subsequently did not fix the proportions on the dating website or Photoshop the war zone pictures as we see all too often. Um, and uh, you can do that in a zero knowledge preserving way which hides the, for example, embarrassing dome room background of your dating pictures. And last but not least, um, there is a flurry of activity around identity attestation on the blockchain, tracking not the assets, but the people, and their credit history, or their age for the purpose of alcohol consumption, or um, arbitrary other properties that depend on the system, uh, on, the, on the domain, but, re but often require preserving the privacy of those participants. Similarly, you may be tracking assets not for the purpose of ownership, but for the purpose of reasoning about them. For example, tracking an airspace platform uh, to um, figure out whether it's uh, undergone uh, proper maintenance uh, or uh, to track its uh, value for insurance purposes. And that is something that uh, Kedit has been uh, pursuing uh, and um, is developing a powerful set of techniques for, and including uh, ways to adapt them to specific business need settings. 
Now, so far, we took um, those ZK snarks as uh, a, just something that we use as a tool. I didn't say much about their existence other than a slide with many, uh, with many citations. There is one aspect that is getting many headlines when it comes to ZK snarks, which is the following. The most efficient ZK snarks that we know of are th those based on quadratic arithmetic programs. It's a certain cryptographic approach to summarizing, summarizing computation into an equation that can be efficiently checked. They're very fast, they are widely used, but they require public parameters, also called a structured reference string. That means that this picture gets more complicated. The prover and verifier both need to know some keys that are generated by someone. And how would that happen? Well, the brute force way to create such keys that are used by both the prover and verifier is to have a trusted setup where someone is just trusted by fiat to do this computation correctly and to not reveal the secret randomness that they use. The drawbacks to that should be obvious. An alternative is multi-party computation using numerous nodes and setting up a cryptographic protocol such that if even one of those nodes is honest and uncompromised, then the resulting keys are correct and will uh, result in sound and privacy-preserving proofs. So you would g gather a bunch of people together and tell them uh, how to use a prescribed protocol. They would each erase their transient randomness. At the end of the day, you end up with the requisite keys, and then you can use them forever for the lifetime of the system. This was done by Zcash in its first uh, deployment. Uh, some extreme operational security um, uh, steps were taken. Then this was done again by Zcash in its uh, second um, iteration, the sapling upgrade, which involves not just six participants as in the first iteration, but nearly 100. And uh, each one was um, uh, encouraged to use their own means of, uh, to create and destroy randomness, ranging from radioactive ra radiation from Chernobyl to uh, one of nature's favorite sources of randomness, namely cats in, in Faraday cages. Um, and so uh, there, the smooth math works. Uh, we can just deploy it and be happy. Uh, or so we thought. Uh, we had an unfortunate discovery recently. Um, we disclosed, uh, more precisely, an unfortunate discovery that happened about a year ago, which was that there was a mistake in the math of the zero knowledge proofs, basically a, a, uh, an incorrect equations in one of my papers, so I'm as guilty as anyone, um, that uh, would have violated the soundness of the proofs in the uh, zero knowledge uh, chain in, for Zcash. I say would have violated because um, bef well before the disclosure of this bug, uh, the sapling upgrade happened and neutralizes this vulnerability. And it is widely believed that it was uh, not known uh, to any malicious parties, let alone exploited before that. Uh, and there are no means to detect any attempts to um, um, use that uh, uh, former vulnerability to violate the monetary supply in Zcash. But it does show uh, one of the things that we have to be very careful of. Uh, the fact that uh, something appeared in a paper with academics on it uh, is the first step. What are the next steps? We'll talk about ZK proof. The Zcash sampling upgrade that I mentioned, uh, besides redoing the, um, the parameter generation ceremony and uh, preventing that vulnerability, also dramatically improved uh, the performance and it's now uh, essentially the state of the art in SNARK functionality. Now, if you are concerned about uh, the trusted setup or about uh, multi-party uh, generation ceremonies, there are approach to mitigate that risk. For example, there is a particular type of SNARKs that does not have any explicit setup ceremony or explicit parameters. Um, it's the family of SNARKs based on probabilistically checkable proofs, such as the stack construction. 
At the moment, they are less efficient for most practical uses, but their performance is rapidly improving. There are also ZK knowledge proofs that are not succinct, but rely on weaker assumptions, and in particular, avoid the structured reference string. This includes uh, bullet proofs and the other constructions. And uh, also, there are ways to get the best of all worlds. You can use the fast QEP-based SNARKs, but reduce the, reduce the trust on the structured reference string. For example, in a, the shark construction that I developed with co-authors, uh, H stands for hybrid. You can use it as a snark, but if you ever become worried about your proof, you can do prudent verification that does not rely on any trusted setup or structured reference string. It's just a bit slower. So it's a very large landscape, and again, application dependent. Now, there are many challenges here. The parameter setup, performance, which is rapidly increasing, but still is a bottleneck in many applications, as well as verifying the correctness of algorithms and implementations to avoid things like the vulnerability I mentioned. And most crucially, finding new applications and ensuring that we use those your knowledge proofs correctly in those applications. To this end, we initiated the ZK proof standardization effort uh, very widely attended and very, with the, the participation from leaders in academia and industry uh, with the goal of producing guidelines and best practices, common language uh, and interoperability, as well as inspiring new research by pro providing templates and tutorials and uh, the means for practitioners to enter the fray. It started with the first Zero Knowledge Proof Workshop um, uh, in Cambridge in 2018, um, where we had three tracks, uh, handling security and theory, handling implementation aspects and interoperability, as well as surveying applications and trying to find their commonalities. Subsequently, we have a more focused workshop at Zcon Zero, of, uh, organized by the Zcash Foundation, and a few weeks ago, uh, we had the second ZK Proof Workshop that was attended by over 140 people. Uh, you can see some of the sponsors for a feel of the interest. And uh, while I don't recognize all faces here from those workshops, the good news is that you can catch up because zkproof.org has detailed proceedings from all of, the, all of those meetings. They have a, a curated community reference that is evolving to represent the latest and greatest coverage of the core materials. And we are um, uh, thankful for NIST to indeed uh, joining this effort and uh, contributing from their extensive experience on uh, communicating and working towards standards uh, in helping uh, this uh, uh, curation editorial process. We have uh, various community proposals and they're supporting Git repos. Uh, the ZK interface proposal that I mentioned earlier is one of these. We have a very active community forum and um, there is even an annotated bibliography and taxonomy of the papers and systems uh, on, the, uh, on a dedicated website. So in conclusion, go Moonmath.